I want to talk to you about BlackRock. I want to talk to you a little bit about world growth in a second. But first, we focus on central banks. How uh, has, Mr. Hildebrand, the outlook for central banks changed? Are they all turning dovish? Good morning, Francine. It's great to be here. Well, look, we are in this late cycle phase. We have a synchronized global slowdown. The central banks are seeing this. And they're responding initially by basically being cautious in terms of any further uh, normalization, or indeed in the case of Europe, the beginning of, of normalization. So that's the first stage of this response. And then typically what they'll do is watch the data, see how things evolve, and uh, be careful, deliberate, but cautious. Are, are you worried that actually the normalization is delayed? Is there a chance that actually they miss the window to normalize, and then we see a downturn in the world economy? Well, that is the, my biggest concern at the moment. I think you know there's still a good chance we have the slowdown now. That's a fact. It's late cycle. Everything gets a bit more complicated. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't have a soft landing. Uh, I think the chances of a recession are very small, certainly this year and even going into 2020. The challenge really is to avoid a crisis, a policy mistake, or some other thing that goes wrong that then puts us in a in a place uh, of heightened vulnerability, given the limited uh, space that we have in policy, both on the central banking side, but frankly, also on the fiscal side. Uh, g given the current economy, Mr. Hildebrand, what does a policy mistake actually look like? Well, the, the most imminent one right now would be uh, a hard Brexit. Uh, that's the obvious one. Uh, longer term ones would be you know, the inability to, to solve or at least uh, reduce the tension around the trade discussions between the United States and China. And then I think probably the most important one longer term is how to manage what, what appears to be a much deeper strategic uh, co-op uh, competition or perhaps even a confrontation between the United States and China. I think to me that's structurally probably the biggest risk we face. And that will require um, statesmen to step up and, and manage this tension. I mean, we know we have competition. We know we have tension. The key is to avoid an outright confrontation between the United States and China. I think that's the biggest challenge the world faces right now. But do, do you see any signs that actually there is an escalation? What we're hearing from both sides, I guess, is that both the U.S. and China want to strike a deal. Now, what we don't know is whether it's a deal that lasts more than three months. Your thoughts? Exactly. I mean, I think if we focus you know, uniquely on the trade deficit, which seems to be the, 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 the dominant focus of the president of the United States, I'm rather optimistic that something can be done to alleviate that. Uh, if you look at trade in general, I would say there's a good chance that we find at least some kind of arrangement that lasts for some time. The more difficult issue is the underlying um, tension, in a sense, around who is going to have the supremacy, in a way, in this digital age around technology. That's the one that will be much more challenging to manage going forward, I suspect.